My name is Jose Alzola, captain assigned to Platform 34, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. Today we're going to be discussing how to force entry into a residential sectional garage door. So we get to our garage door, first thing we're going to do is size it up as well as the building. Assuming that there is no active fire behind the garage, our end goal is going to be to lift this door entirely. So our first cut, as you see here, label number one, is going to be our first inspection cut. It's going to be approximately center of the door and higher up. We're going to punch through and we're going to have a look inside and see what our conditions are. We're also going to check the size of the hurricane bracing and we can apply water through this inspection hole if the conditions require it. We're going to look to see if the door is attached to a motor. If it's on the track and it is to the motor, we can possibly reach in, pull the pull cord and disengage the door from the automatic garage door opener. If that rope is burned away or the homeowner removed it, we can use our roof hook, just reach in and activate the linkage itself and release the door and now we're able to open it from the outside manually. We've reached in, there's no garage motor, now we gotta look for a different means. We uh, sized up the door we see on the outside, it does have a, a handle and a lock. This particular center lock acts like a fox lock. So when you turn it, you got two rods that extend in both directions and they land in a keeper within the track on both sides. So our first shot should be to try to open this manually. If it doesn't open manually, we're going to take it out of the equation. That'll be our second triangle cut. Keep in mind that just because we cut that away, we still need to reach inside with a gloved hand and manually pull out the rods from the keeper on both sides. If both of those uh, methods don't work or in your size up, you believe that there's heavy fire behind this door and you believe that that heat has compromised the components of this door where we cannot raise it and keep it in an overhead position, we're going to leave the door in place, we're going to make our barn door cut, and we're going to create our own entry hole. By doing that, it would be our third cut. We're going to do one vertical cut from the top as far down as we can to the bottom. If the thickness of the bracing is beyond the reach of our saw, leading us into the reason for the second vertical cut. We're going to go to our second cut. We're going to come straight down about a foot next to that, and we're going to peel this uh, exterior material away to expose the braces on the inside. So by exposing this, we can reach the saw inside and we can get a full cut of that, of that brace. So once we have number three and four done, we skin this back and our fifth cut is gonna be straight down through each one of these braces until we reach the bottom one and we cut through that one. Traditionally, we would do a triangle cut in there so we can fit, but since we're skinning this back, we're not gonna need to make that triangle cut. Once we skin this back, we fit our, our saw in there and we cut the bottom rail and that's cut, cut number five. Cut number six, um, we're gonna do a horizontal cut. We're gonna aim as high as we comfortably can, holding the, the saw on our shoulder. We're gonna aim for about mid panel. We're not gonna cross cut this right away. We're gonna leave that for later. We're gonna run our horizontal cut on our shoulder, the length of the garage door till we reach the end. Once that's done, then we can come back and finish our cut. That keeps this uh, door from wanting to fall on us or pinch the blade as we're running the saw uh, the, the length of the door. Once that's all cut up and freed up, we can take the door and just peel it back, and that's where the barn door comes from.